Herford syndrome. Where have you heard of Herford syndrome? Yes, you are thinking right. I am talking about sarcoidosis. Yes or no? So when we talk about Herford syndrome, what are the classical things that you see? You get to see uveitis. You get to see uveitis. You get to see parotitis. Parotitis. Along with that, you get to see pain plus fever. So pain plus fever, uveitis and parotitis. This is seen in cases of sarcoidosis. So sarcoidosis, sarcoidosis. Along with this, uveitis, parotitis, pain, and you can say fever. These are the classical features which are associated with this. And along with that, you get to see facial nerve weakness also. Facial nerve weakness may, may be seen also. Facial nerve weakness may be seen. So facial nerve weakness, uveitis, parotitis, pain and fever. Then we have one more thing, Lofgren syndrome. But there the parotic involvement is not there in sarcoidosis. So I am not teaching you. There Lofgren syndrome, if we talk about, we have bilateral hilar lymphadenopathy. Along with that, you have arthralgia. So, arthralgia plus lymphadenopathy, that is a Lofgren syndrome. Let us talk something on saliva also. Let us talk something on saliva. When we talk about saliva, I am just discussing some important basic points, miscellaneous small points. I am trying to recollect them for you. So, if you get an exam, you should be able to answer these small petty questions. The first thing is, what is the average daily output when we talk about average daily output it is somewhere around 1.5 liters so average daily output is 1.5 liters then let us talk about the second thing the ph the ph at resting condition at resting condition the ph is 7 at the ph of active saliva the ph of active saliva is 8 why the pH of active saliva is 8? Because of two important things. Because of the amylase, which is secreted by the salivary gland. Yes, amylase. So we have amylase, which is secreted by the salivary glands. And again, the secretion coming from the tongue glands. So all these are actually going to contribute to active, active pH of 8. Yes. Next is, let us see when we talk about the salivary contribution yeah so basal basal composition if you talk about or you can say basal contribution basal contribution with respect to the glands yes 70 percent of the saliva 70 percent of the saliva is contributed by sub mandibular gland and the nature is always remember the nature is viscous the nature is viscous. 20% of the saliva is contributed by parotid. And the parotid saliva is serous in nature. Always remember, except parotid, everything is viscous. So, this is serous. Then remaining 10% is by sublingual glands plus minor salivary glands. And again, they are also viscous. Except few glands like Ebner's gland, etc. Which are having a... Uh, serous secretion but majority of them are having this basal secretion to be viscous in nature so saliva this is very 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 important the daily output I have told the pH I have told you next is we have two conditions we have saliva which is excessive secretion of saliva and we have xerostomia which is actually the dry mouth which is associated with Zogren syndrome which is associated with Zogren syndrome so these are two important conditions which we should be knowing with saliva subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from prep ladder